folks, dude here, and well, this video is going to be a response to uh, one of my longtime subscribers, one of my Facebook friends. Uh, his channel is Prepared Scout Dad. Has all kinds of cool farm uh, prep stuff, and just generally good basic knowledge, and you know, who's who, how to do it, and he's generally a good dude. He's uh, also one of my Facebook friends, so if you want to check him out on Facebook, check him out on Facebook. Prepared Scout Dad uh, has his Facebook link directly on his channel. I'm, I'm not going to link it here. I'm just going to put his. I'm going to put his channel name right here, so you guys could just basically go on his channel, and check him out. <clears throat> but he predisposed me to have to respond to a question, and the question was basically simply put. He, he said another good video, and this was for my. Um, I think prepping for protein video, just very recent, but uh, another good video, and this is now, this is two now that your watch is part of the cast, so how about a review on that bad boy, only reason I ask is, because I'm in the market for a good watch, actually two of them, and one for me, one for the wifey, and I basically just said, sure dude, it's uh, the G-Shock George Whiskey 600 uh, Delta Alpha hyphen one v victor shock proof atomic clock atomic uh clock auto set solar charge runs for 11 months in complete darkness and has power saving to switch off when it knows there isn't enough light uh basically let me jump over here real quick and you guys can see what's going on here larger view larger view of the watch and that's you know it's it i mean basically that that is you know it's got it's got a double lock clasp on it um Basically, it's uh, stainless on stainless on stainless on stainless. Has a couple plastic parts around the chassis. Nothing major. Um, it is a hell of a stout watch. I mean, let's just run through the specs here real quick. Uh, technical specifications. Da 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 da. da. It is uh, atomic. It's timekeeping. It, re it receives time time calibrations, radio signals to keep the watch time accurate. It receives three times per day. It uses the 60 kilowatts receiving from the atomic clock out in the Midwest. And there's bounce stations around all over the United States. So most of the time, you will get the auto reset. It uh, has a built-in solar panel. It's around the ring here. You can just barely see it. There's a ring of solar panel that keeps it charged up. It is shock resistant. No, this thing is shock damn proof. I beat the snot out of this thing, and I have never hurt a bit. i got a couple scratches in it, but it is all stainless. Um, excuse me. Tiggy needs to make an appearance. Mmm. Mmm. Italian roast. Oh, I'm so needing that. Anyway, um, it has a short run backlight because the, the you know the basically the battery has to recharge by solar, so it doesn't run real long. That's that's it. Basically, has about a second and a half, two second run. That's it. Uh, has world time, has 29 time zones, 30 cities, city code display, daytime saving, daylight savings time. You basically have to click that manually because it doesn't know when it is. It varies by the year. Uh, four daily alarms, one snooze alarm, a countdown timer measuring time into one-tenth of a second, a countdown range of one minute to 60 minutes, a stopwatch, a uh, measuring capacity up to 23 hours, 59 minutes, 59 seconds, 99 hundredths, Measuring modes will be elapsed time, split time, second and first place, hourly time signal, automatic calendar, 12 or 24 hour format. And you, and you can see I got this thing set on military time, so it is 13.07 in the afternoon, which would be, uh, okay, do the math, folks. It's basically 3 in the afternoon, okay? Uh, you basically take the number, you subtract 12, that's your time of day. Uh, accuracy is plus or minus 15 seconds per month with no signal calibration. It's usually dead nuts, man. I mean, it's usually dead nuts. I mean, I usually you can watch TV, and it, it corresponds with the program switching up. Um, the storage battery is a Charlie Tango Lincoln 1616. I have yet to change it out. Some people have said they've had to change theirs. I have not had to do so. It does have a battery power indicator. Mine has never dropped below uh, 8, which would be high. Uh, has a power saving function, and that's kind of cool. Let me show you how that works. Let me show you the watch here real quick. Basically what happens is, you have it in daylight, the solar cell knows it isn't receiving any more light signal, and it basically just goes blank. And you'll see a little flashing PS in the display. Power save. That's all it is. It's a little flashing display and it says, I'm saving my juice. Approximate battery life, 11 months on a full charge without further exposure to light. The module on it is number 2971. Case and total weight of this, this booger is going to be 54.1. 46.6 and 14.3 millimeters. So it, it's a chunky little spot. It really is. 135 grams. So it's not light. This thing is, I mean, it's, 
what, five or six ounces. It is not a light watch. It is hell for stout. It is good to 200 meters, which would be 660 feet. I've gone swimming with this thing without a single care, and let me tell you, man, it is the coolest damn thing. When you're down in Florida, it's hot as hell, you sweep off all your clothes except for your swim trunks, and you go diving in wearing your watch. That's cool, man, without a single care in the world, knowing you will not hurt your watch. Now, here's the dirty little secret about what they say about, like, 200 meter, uh, 150 meter, 100 meter, 20 meter, whatever these watches, water resistant. Here's how it works. Let me take another swig of tiggy. Mmm. Mm. Oh, the timer is so good. <clears throat> okay, so basically you have your watch underwater. You're swishing your arm around. When you're swishing your arm around, you're not just putting, you know, uh, however atmospheres of pressure on there. You're putting also a dynamic shock load of water pressure because you're moving your arm around. If your arm was just sitting still, it would be, okay, let's just say 14.7 pounds at sea level for air pressure. You go down 100 feet. It's now 50 pounds per square inch. I'm just throwing numbers out here, okay? I'm not doing the math. It's now 50 pounds per square inch. You start moving your arm around, it peaks to 75, okay? You go down to 200 feet. It's now at 100 PSI per square inch. Now, granted, this thing's not huge, but, you know, that's still a couple hundred pounds of square inches of, you know, pressure on this thing, and it's looking to find a way in. You're sweeping your arm, doing your various things, grabbing stuff, moving it around, doing your scuba things, what have you. You now have just expressed 400 pounds per square inch on this thing. Seals are going to fail. And when they do fail, water gets in there and it fries the thing because electronics do not like to get wet. Now, here's the dirty little secret. If you're at 200 meters and you're swishing your arm around, potentially you could overload this thing and make it pop. But here's the kicker. If you're at 100 meters, there's no way in the world you will hurt this thing Ever. What it is, it's a gross tolerance that they say the thing is rated for. Now, when they say 200 meters, it means you're at a 200 meters. That's it. That's as good as it's going to get. You go down to 220, boosh. And that's simply because water compounds itself. It's non-compressible. Water is the only thing on the United, well, in the world that is non-compressible. What happens is when you put water under pressure, it tries to find a way out. So if you have a, a, a cast metal cylinder and you put pressure in it by a piston and you keep pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing, you're going to reach a point where the pressure just keeps building and building and building. The piston doesn't go down anymore, but what happens is the pressure vessel will fail because it finds the weak spot and blows it out. That's the way water works. All right, now going back over here real quick to the larger view. This is all the things lit up. <coughs> <coughs> Uh, this indicator here is going to be your uh, power si power situation, which basically shows H as being fully charged. DST would be daylight savings time, course of time, PM. I don't have mine set for that, except for 24 hour. The snooze, the alarm, the date, the day. Uh, power save, you'll see that. Fl everything else will be off, and you will see that P save flashing when it goes to power save mode. Now, this isn't really the best picture, I'm sure, but unfortunately, it's one of these blow-up things, so I can't blow it up anymore. Uh, just give me a sec. i got to cough a bit, and let me get off camera here for one sec. Uh, I forgot about this segment, but I'm just going to freehand this because it just really cracked me up. Uh, this review is from Casio Men's George Whiskey 600 David Adam hyphen one Victor G-Shock Atomic Tough Solar Watch. And <laughs> he put down for his comment... This is an awesome watch. I had trouble finding a high-quality watch until I came across this. Pros. Extremely tough, recessed face, resists scratching and protects it during drops. Huge number of features, timer, stopwatch, world clock, alarm, etc. Changed it to the day I got it and haven't had a problem in seven years. My, uh, my model is the older version of this one. Cons. The tough design tends to attract dirt and hard-to-clean places. Guess he's never heard of taking a shower with a toothbrush and a thing. The lettering fell off, leaving behind a low contrast etching that is hard to read. Um, dude, it's your watch. You don't have to read it. You know where all the buttons are and what they do. Apparently, it doesn't deal well with electric shock. Uh, despite the shock-resistant label, a little shock ended up resetting the time. Quite large and heavy, definitely not something you would want to wear with a dress shirt as a cuff has a hard time clearing the head. Um... <clears throat> I saw that and I just had to make comment. I said, dude, they mean impact shock, never electrical shock. Any electronic device has a point where it's overcome by electrical impulses or grounding won't help any longer. 
<laughs> I'm certainly going to break off on that one, folks. But I'm going to go back to the video now. Okay, having coughed up about two lungs worth of, um, well, lung, I now can proceed back to what I was doing. Okay, now basically, the, um, the watch itself, this is one of the previous versions of G-Shock, and of course, G-Shocks, every so often they update, and there's better stuff coming out, and, um, let me just do a real quick search here, real fast. G-Shock, let me try to spell it correctly. G-Shock, I can't damn talk and speak and type at the same time. Ugh. Okay, G-Shock, let me do it right here. Stainless. Atomic. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's see, now what was the one I just shipped him? I shipped him a message here, let me stick on second here. And jump over my set things. Do 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 do. Um, no, that'll be this one. The Papa Alpha Golf 80-1V, which will be the newest one, which will be the one kind of along the lines of what he was thinking about. I was like, dude, what are you looking for? He goes, Oh, I want something that tells temperature, it has a compass, has a barometer, and all this other happy horse mess. <clears throat> That's gonna be this puppy right here. Oh, this watch is this watch is just bu bad. Okay, now, in terms of sheer size and everything, it's not as glitzy as mine, but let's break it down. It has a altimeter, it has a barometer, it has a digital compass, it has a solar setup, it's a digital watch, and it ha Okay, let's go through the, the, the things of what it does. Uh, it basically has everything like mine, essentially, except for the stainless case. <laughs> It's 51 millimeters, so it's a little bigger in diameter. It's a little thicker because it's 16.5 millimeters. It's um, <clears throat> it's got all those good things. It's water resistant. Is a bit less. Now um, that one's decent. Now let's jump over here to this one. This one is just sick. This is probably about the best, newest, brightest light on the tree. Now the thing is that one I just showed you previously is about 120 bucks. I got this on eBay. For about 80 bucks. Now, the other thing, too, is these things go up very, very quickly in price. This one's a buck and a... Well, this one's two and a quarter. This would be the Papa Alpha Whiskey 1100-1 Victor Pathfinder Atomic Solar Watch. That thing does everything mine does, everything that that previous one does, and does it better. Now, let's break this sucker down real quick and dirty here. It is also only rated to 330 feet. You're giving up something for all those sensors to be sticking out and reading all that stuff on the outside. But I'll tell you what. You go down to 100 meters, you're you're really working your ass off. Because if you're scuba diving, 100 meters is not an easy depth to get to in the first place. You're probably using uh, hybrid gases. and It's really a lot of work to get down there. But he asked me originally what was mine. And I would say probably this would be your best bang for the buck right here, because this guy is 125 bucks. It originally listed for 250, and the kicker is, it is a hell of a nice watch. Let me bump it up one more time so you guys can see what I'm talking about here. <clears throat> oh, it is a hell of a nice watch. I would say if you wish to get yourself really something kick-ass, and you like mine, and it doesn't need to be as glitzy with all the stainless steel. Jump on one of the Pathfinders. Seriously, jump on one of the Pathfinders. If you don't get the Papa Alpha Golf 80-1 Victor, definitely jump. If you can afford another 100 bucks, get the Papa Alpha Whiskey 11001 Victor. Either one of those two watches will seriously kick your ass in terms of ability. Now, the other thing, too, I believe this watch also has world time capable. So, if you go to any other country, it's going to reset automatically. Mine won't do that. Mine will basically just go, I'm not reading that thing over in Europe. I'm not reading that thing over in Russia. I don't understand that one over in Taiwan or Japan or other places like that. Because their atomic clocks are also on different frequencies than ours. But here's the kicker. If I said this thing and I roll out, I'm within 15 seconds, plus or minus, so basically, I can keep an eye on it, and if it's off, you know, in the course of one week, I can touch it up, or, you know, it's really not hard to set the seconds on a digital watch. You simply just find a time, and three, two, one, mark.
That, that's it. I mean, it's not rocket science here. And you guys know that I usually wear my watch inside. But you know what? When I go outside, I'll flip it around the outside so it does charge when I'm driving around and stuff. But I almost always have worn my watch to the inside of my wrist. It's just habit. I always have. It's just something I do. But anyway, the, um, the long and the short of it is I have carried a G-Shock. God. Uh, I think the first G-Shock I ever bought was probably in the mid-80s. And I've been wearing them ever flipping since. Uh, I've even broken the crystals on one, drowned them a number of times, and they still came back to life, and I still used them, but eventually got to the point where they were just too, uh, uh, Charlie Fox trotted to work anymore, so I basically just, you know, duffed that one and went to another one, <clears throat> but the modules stayed the same, I mean, I basically had the same watch with different cases for the better part of 20 years, and I can tell you for a fact, I really like Casio G-Shocks. I mean, yeah, the Timex, uh, was it Iron Man, are really good too. But I've had exceptional service out of the G-Shocks. Including and upwards of actually washing my watch in the washing machine a few times. Uh, I did catch it before it went into the dryer, but it went through a full wash cycle. All that banging around and whatnot. And that was not the shock-worthy ones. That was basically just the standard uh, waterproof. I think it was... What, 100? No, actually, no, no. They were still 200-meter watches. Oh, excuse me again. Mm. Uh, no, they were still 200-meter watches. The biggest difference was, of course, <clears throat> they were plastic bodies. Um, I, I forget what they actually call them, resin or something. Uh, I think they actually call them, like, yeah, it's resin body as opposed to plastic or polymer, but it, it's basically polymer. And uh, I can tell you for a fact, these are awesome awesome freaking watches man you will get nothing but excellent service out of these guys and they will serve you very 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 well uh you would behoove you to get yourself a casio g-shock and uh strap it on your wrist good times all right so uh prepared scout dad uh dude i just basically wanted to give you a you know a little bit of a Heads up here and uh, let you know that i do listen to my audience and i do make videos that basically do uh well uh Pay homage to those basically pay attention to me. So basically, here's Prepared Scout Dad. Uh, yet again, you can find him on YouTube. And yet again, you can also find him on Facebook. That's his link right there on Facebook. And um, he's got another page also on Facebook called Tomorrow's Prep Today. He raises critters. He eats critters. He, he knows what he's doing, okay? Basically, I would take some very good advice from him. And he's just a generally good dude. And, uh... Sub him, and definitely check out his Facebook channel. Good times. All right, so here on the Guys Podcast channel, I'm going to tell you about cool tech, and I really, truly enjoy my G-Shocks, and get one. Trust me, you, you will not cry long and hard about it, you know, except for a little bit of bite in your pocketbook, and it'll serve you well in a very, very good fashion for a very, very long time. Good times. So, as usual, eat good. Uh, keep in the 10 ring. Don't buy crappy watches. Good times.